everybody, Nate here, back with another episode of Backstage with Nate. Today's video is all about Konstantin Stanislavski. I'm going to tell you about who he is, I'm going to tell you about his acting method, and I'm going to give you some tips and tricks of how to apply his process to the characters that you create in your performances. Stay tuned. Konstantin Stanislavski has long been believed to be the grandfather of modern acting. Without him, we would not have the realistic type performances that we see on TV and film today. Konstantin Stanislavski's work really defined the process of so many of the acting methods that are still being taught today. Without Konstantin Stanislavski, we wouldn't have the great works of Stella Adler or Sanford Meisner or even the actual method of method acting that so many actors follow. We owe so much of our process as actors to Konstantin Stanislavski, so it's important to understand his background, his story, and to understand how his methods can be used to create amazing performances on stage. Konstantin Stanislavski was an actor and a director back in the early 1900s at the famed Moscow Arts Theater. Konstantin Stanislavski was one of the first people to actively take and shape realistic acting on stage. Prior to Stanislavski, we really saw performances that were based on performing heightened language, focusing on the beauty of the language rather than the actual story itself. Stanislavski came into performing at a time when really our views on society and our views on life were really changing. We owe so much of Konstantin Stanislavski's work actually to Charles Darwin and his work on understanding the process of evolution. Now, regardless of your beliefs on evolution, it's important to know that Darwin's work was deeply impacting all forms of society and actually was influencing work being done on stage. Charles Darwin's theory was that species, regardless whether they're animal or human or, or any species, would do anything in a process to survive. Everything boils down to how do we survive? If that's the goal, then everything along the way is going to be in service to that goal. This idea was being actively discussed among different levels of society and had made its way into theater because as we know, theater as a whole is just an understanding of the human experience. It has been that all the way since the times of the ancient Greeks. So there was so much discussion about trying to understand the human experiences that we were starting to see more realistic human experiences being performed on stage. It was less about seeing stories about mythology or about the royalty and more about seeing the human experience on stage, viewing life through a window. We know this was starting to take place because of the works of, say, Heinrich Ibsen or even Anton Chekhov. Stanislavski was one of the first people to really pursue the works of Anton Chekhov and bringing them into the Moscow Arts Theater. At this time, we also had the development of the study of psychology, trying to understand what was going on in the human mind. So as a result of all of this, we were seeing characters not just dealing with external influences, but also dealing with their internal influences as well, trying to see how they could interpret things, not only just physically, externally, but also internally seeing our characters try to understand situations and how to grapple with those situations on stage, something we really had not seen prior to this kind of revolution in trying to understand human nature. Konstantin Stanislavski wrote three books on this process, which I'll talk about in a second, but everything boils down to three simple steps. What do I want? How do I get it? And what stands in my way? That's it. Now, professionally, we have some specific terms for these. The what do I want, we refer to as our objectives or our goal. The how am I going to get it, we refer to as our action or our tactics. And the what stands in my way, we refer to as our obstacles. So you might hear in acting classes or on character analysis worksheets, you might see objectives, tactics, and obstacles. So what are these things? Let's go through an example. 
As I'm filming this video right now, it is around 12 o'clock, which means it's almost lunchtime. I am hungry. So what do I want? I want food. That's a noun. Typically, what do I want is a noun, a person, place, thing, or an idea. We know those from English class, but just as a refresher, we want a noun, something that we can actually take or get. So I want food. That seems easy enough. How am I going to get it? My actions or my tactics? Well, I could cook the food. I could go buy food. As my younger students always like to remind me, I could steal the food. I could ask someone to make food for me. All of these are actions or verbs. Our actions or our tactics are always things that we can actually do. Our obstacles or what stands in my way, in this case, would be this video, recording this video. The idea of recording this video is an obstacle. That's an idea. Again, another noun. You, the person watching it, and my responsibility to you as a person in helping you understand this concept is another obstacle. So a person can be an obstacle. The situation, maybe I don't have any food. That's an obstacle. Maybe I don't know how to cook, the lack of knowledge. Again, an idea is an obstacle. Maybe I don't have any money. That's an obstacle. These are, again, nouns. So our goals, what do we want? Those are nouns. And our obstacles are nouns. And so the actions, the things that the actors can actually do, our tactics, our actions, our verbs. And this is so important to understand in Stanislavski's method because it gives you something to actually do. Playing emotions or playing the beauty of the language doesn't allow you to actually do something, which means it's not coming from an honest place. It's not real. It's not authentic to you. This seems like a very simple concept, and at its core, it is because human nature does the same thing. We can really look at any situation in our lives as, what do I want? How do I get it? What stands in my way? We do this all the time, but we don't always label it that way. This is why Stanislavski's method is so genius. It's that simple. We do this all day long, but it really does allow us to sink into the depths of understanding our characters from a truly intrinsic, a mental, inside of them type of way. Konstantin Stanislavski wrote three amazing books on this topic, which have really become the basis of all the acting methods that we have today. The first, of course, being an actor prepares, the second being building a character, and the third, creating a role. If you don't have these books in your collection, I would strongly recommend adding them because they really are a fantastic way of looking at how he created this method. But you can totally understand these three steps without even reading the book. How do we put these things into an application? The first thing would be to understand your character's overall goals and your overall obstacles. We call these super objectives and super obstacles. These are the things that are going to influence your character throughout the entire story. Then break things down into individual scenes the goals or the objectives that you have in each scene. What is it that you want in each scene? Then go through line by line and figure out exactly how are you going to use actions to achieve those goals in each scene. Make sure that the goals that you have in each scene then are part of the overall super objective. Everything is fueling that super objective for your character throughout their entire arc in the story. Try to see if your actions are influenced by the obstacles. What are the obstacles that you face in the scene? And do those obstacles play into the overall super obstacle that your character experiences throughout the arc of the story? This is where we start getting into script and character analysis. I'm going to do more videos on these in the future. But take the time and break down your scene to try to understand what your character is experiencing from their intrinsic perspective as part of the show. And you will have a really great understanding that's going to allow you to build your character in a way that's going to make them real, human, and 
honest. And that, of course, is really the definition of amazing acting. If you feel that you're struggling with trying to understand this concept, this would definitely be the time to reach out to an acting teacher or an audition coach. If you'd like more information about working with me, you can find out that on my website. The link is included in the description below. That's it for this episode. I hope you found the information useful. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. The more thumbs in the air, the more episodes will be coming your way. If you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, go click that big red button so you get notified whenever I post a new video. If you haven't yet followed my studio on social media, all the links for doing so are included in the description below. If you'd like to schedule a coaching session with me or maybe you're a fellow teacher interested in a masterclass, you can find out more information about scheduling those on my website. The link is included in the description below. Thanks so much for checking out this episode and I hope this information gets you even closer to finding your stage door. See you soon.